One of the biggest games in the Xbox catalog outside of this year's Holiday, Forza, and Halo releases are the upcoming RPGs from the newly acquired studio Bethesda Softworks with Starfield and Elder Scrolls VI. Bethesda has been the watermark of RPGs and some of the most memorable genre-defining games that have lasted for decades. Many are wondering what is taking Bethesda so long to bring their biggest and brightest games to Xbox and PC. And some are wondering if the reception of Fallout 76 is any indication of what is to come for the future of online and single-player RPG campaigns. The wait is finally over for their next big game and the head of the studio, Todd Howard, finally sat down to talk about when and what we can expect from the absolutely massive Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 and a surprise insight on something even bigger. This is Colt Eastwood. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about Todd Howard revealing a bunch of information about three major games coming to Xbox. The source is linked in the description. This is an interview with IGN's Ryan McCaffrey, a 38-minute interview which I condensed down to about 10 minutes of the highlights of some of the important takeaways that he got from this interview. If you end up enjoying this content, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new content. And let's look at Starfield, Elder Scrolls, and a bit more. There are a handful of games coming in 2022, but the next big game is Starfield, set for November 11th, 2022, exactly a year from now, and we have yet to see much in action for the game outside of in-engine trailers, concept art, and segmented descriptions of lore and locations that we will eventually discover in Starfield's expansive universe. Recently, Ryan McCaffrey from IGN sat down to interview Todd Howard to talk about the Skyrim 10-year anniversary and Bethesda's plans moving forward. Starfield is a big question on the minds of RPG fans, and Todd Howard explains why they began a space opera just after the release of Fallout 4. We felt doing something like Starfield, I mean, we wanted to do something else for a long time and, and play in a new universe, kind of, well, if not now, I'm going back in time. We started in right after Fallout 4, so 2015, end mm -hmm. of it. If not now, when? And I felt like the when, if we didn't do it then, the when could be never. Um, and so we, we felt pretty good with where Elder Scrolls was as a franchise, particularly with Elder Scrolls Online, that, yeah. hey, now's time we can do Starfield. You know, that being said, everything takes longer than, than we would like as well, but we want to make sure we get it right. and. Um, you know, hopefully Elder Scrolls 6, you don't want to say like, hey, that's worth that kind of weight, but that it does stand up to the series as it has been in a really big, impactful way for, for when it comes out. The time between Fallout and the next big thing, either Elder Scrolls or Starfield, play into the importance of gathering energy to create a massive RPG that does not feel like a reskin version of their own games. Todd Howard explains why. Well, our games take so long and we do have Fallout as well, so that does keep the creative juices flowing. I could say that, but Starfield is all new. Right. But it was so new that you had no basis. You're kind of starting from scratch, and that's also can be, had its own challenges. You know, what does a spaceship look like? We spent forever on that till we felt we really got it where, hey, this feels unique, this feels like this game. When you go into a franchise, a, a sequel, so to say, you have that basis of what you've done before, how people reacted to it, and then, but you still, for us, I like to, you know, wipe the slate clean and say, okay, what does it mean to be a fantasy role-playing game now? The kind of games you want to do where you're stepping into a virtual world, what does that mean? Don't think about making a sequel. Right. Start fresh. Ryan asked Todd Howard directly about Fallout 5, the next mainline game in the series outside of Fallout 76 support. If the next Fallout game will be pushed to beyond the release of Elder Scrolls 6 or handed off to the mini Xbox Game Studios partners like In Exile, Obsidian, or even The Coalition. Is there a scenario where you hand Fallout off? I don't see, look, Fallout's really part of our DNA here. Yeah. We've worked with other people from time to time. I can't say what's gonna happen. You know, we have a one pager on, on Fallout 5, what we wanna do. Again, if I could wave my hand and say, have, have <laughs> right. that out. 
I like to view it as one big team and then we have we have groups that focus on one game. The focus right now for the main parts of the teams and Bethesda has many teams across Maryland and Texas working on current and the upcoming Starfield. The focus right now is on Starfield for a committed date of November 11th, 2022. Todd Howard explains the challenges of the final year of development for Starfield. You know, it's a very, very ambitious game. Yeah. Um, look, we were, you know, confident about the date when we put that out there. And, but our main focus is just making the best game that we possibly can. And it's a very, very ambitious game. And we've been through this a number of times, so. One of the major concerns for Starfield, a game that began early in development in the Xbox One generation, is being completed early into the next generation on Xbox Series S and X and PC two to four times more powerful and more capable than the previous hardware in the 2010 era. The major concern is the creation engine, which has powered the design and complexities of Skyrim and Fallout 4 five to 10 years ago. Can the new Starfield in the next generation hold up with a game engine that Bethesda has been working on for so long? It's been a huge jump. It's, it's, it's probably our biggest ever. I could say more went to oblivion that had been our biggest, this now feels bigger to us. Um, and we felt it was time and, and we could really take advantage of the new systems, you know, redoing the render and the, the basic underlying guts of the engine itself. Yeah. And that, um, you know, the results on the screen, we're very, very happy with. It's taking us longer as always than we would like, particularly during the pandemic to yeah. put those parts together. And you're, whenever you do an engine overhaul, you, we're still making data, right? And so we're still doing a lot of art and design and levels and spaces and things like that. And then the engine is changing and figuring out when those sync up is one of the great challenges that, that all game developers uh, deal with. So we're kind of in the midst of that. Uh, we, ha we had been and we're, we're coming through it. We've yet to see gameplay, combat or player interaction or any of the important presentations and showings that would alight fans with an understanding and a grasp of how Starfield will look and feel as a new IP for Xbox. Ryan asked Todd two questions. Where are they at on development a year before launch and will this be Skyrim in space? No, we're, we're at a state where we can play the whole game, yeah. but again, there's so much to do. It's a very, very ambitious game and we're not going to let off the gas there. Um, and given how the world's gone, it's, it's hard to project exactly what's going to happen when. And, and, and we honestly just, we, we do our best. Yeah. And um, it's been, look, in the grand scheme of the world, we have it great. But creatively getting together and, and making those creative decisions and looking at a game together has definitely been challenging. It's part of our DNA, right? So those things that we like, being able to touch the world and, you know, what are you looting from people and how do the factions? So I think there is there is more Skyrim in terms of game structure in Starfield. Um, now that you mention it, the way the factions work, the skill system is, is really, really, uh, really, really like the skill system in Starfield. And it borrows a bit from things we've done in Fallout and Elder Scrolls. So I think this is part of our DNA. You're going to see those hallmarks in kind of anything we do that is, as you say, kind of a mainline yeah. uh, Bethesda game. I, I say it's in Skyrim and space, I say in all the best ways. A surprise explanation from another big game for Bethesda and ZeniMax is Machine Games' new Indiana Jones that has no release date and has not been shown to fans at all with only a short pre-rendered teaser trailer. Todd Howard gives us some insight on what Indiana Jones will be from one of the most talented studios in the family on Xbox. The Indiana Jones game, that, I am like, I love Indiana Jones. People who know me, like, I'm obsessed with Indiana Jones. And I, I got chatting with them and they're like, that's awesome, you should come out and pitch it. So I went out to Lucasfilm and I pitched this game and we almost made it. This was like 10, 12 years ago. Okay. And you know, hey, fast forward to kind of current day, now they're part of Disney and they're starting to license. I got a conversation with somebody there that mm -hmm. I know, John Drake, who was, know was a well, Sony, yeah. love John. And we, we got to chatting with, and I said, oh, I have this Indiana Jones game. And he was like, tell me more. I'm like, is this possible? And so internally, um, you know, really love the work Machine Games does. We Everybody knows each other really, really well. And I, I mentioned to them like, hey, is this something that might interest you? Um, and the work they've done on Wolfenstein and scenes and characters, I just think, 
they're incredible developers. And so I brought up to them, like, hey, something that might interest you. And they said, absolutely. And they're good at the Nazi stuff, right? So um, they're making the game. I'm involved creatively. Like, hey, what's the game going to be? What's the... I had this original story, and we've worked on it sort of together. So I spent a little bit of time on it. They're, it's their, you know, they're running with it. They're doing an amazing job. And so I'm just happy to, to lend a hand and be involved. With the critical and negative reception of Fallout 76, and the popularity of pervasive online multiplayer foundations in most popular games across the industry. Bethesda Softworks is one of the few key important studios to continue the tradition of strong single-player narrative driven experiences in games. Todd Howard promises to continue that focus with Starfield, Elder Scrolls, and the next Fallout game as they work on their biggest titles to remain memorable, critical offerings into the industry. Absolutely. I think that's where, um, you know, even in 76, once we, you know, added the Wastelanders and that kind of questing stuff, the amount of people that want to play it as a solo experience um, is very, very strong. It's, it's part of who we are. It's what we, we love about games. That being said, there are various ways that you can talk about adding social elements to a game that I don't, I don't think take away from that. Yeah. And we've dabbled with some of that and not put it out or things on paper or things that we, we'd like to try in our games. Starfield in holiday 2022. Elder Scrolls 6 possibly in holiday of 2026. And Fallout 5 most likely helmed by the same Bethesda Softworks that brought us to series we still love today. These are the crowning jewels of RPGs. And with Xbox filling in that time between waiting with the promising Avowed and Fable in a year or two, and In Exile's Steampunk RPG. Xbox, with the help of Bethesda, has many great long-lasting games on the way, and that importance of that single-player experience will be strong within the catalog of Xbox titles starting right now. Our, our passion is behind who are you going to be? This world is for you. Go make it your own. This is Cold Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I tried my best to bring as many visual illustrations, different gameplay clips, and a way to look at these games that they haven't shown yet. Bethesda has some of the biggest games coming for Xbox, and right now they're very, very shy in showing what they have. But Starfield is coming out a year from now, so I expect we'll see it at E3 2022. Cross your fingers that E3 comes back and the industry is ready for that. If you ended up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new content that comes out every single week. If you want to learn more, you can follow me on Xbox or at Twitter at Cold Eastwood. Also, if you want to hear even more than that, I do a weekly show on Monday nights called X and C Podcast. That's on YouTube and also on Spotify, Google, Pocket Podcasts. And I'm forgetting some other ones. But I want to know what you think about Starfield. What are you expecting? Skyrim in space? Are you expecting Fallout in space? Are you excited about this? Let me know what you think about Bethesda and what they're doing with Xbox. And for a bonus, is Indiana Jones an exclusive? Now, people are going to argue about that. Well, while you're in the comment section, please remember, be nice.